The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the, oil, but the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Now, Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Here on this 24th Sunday after Pentecost, we are three Sundays away from the first Sunday of Advent. That se you know, that se season which comes before the Christmas season, which the world is already celebrating. Advent is a season marked of waiting, anticipation, and expectation. As believers, we are to live in expectancy every day of our lives as God is always at work in ways seen and unseen. But living in this expectancy requires waiting. Who among us here are big fans of waiting? Not I. In waiting, we are often faced with delays. And so we might as well admit it, waiting is hard. Living in this microwave society of ours. Hurry up already. I tell the microwave, you're not going fast enough. I'm ready to get the food out and eat it. So hurry up, microwave. Our hearts cry out, especially living in these evil and dark times. How long, Lord? When will it ever end? Help us now, oh God. This anxiety and waiting is depicted in the words of the psalmist in today's Psalm 70. And the psalmist writes, Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Come to me quickly. O God, you are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. So to me, it seems as if the psalmist has the audacity to put a rush on God. Isn't that what it sounds like? Hurry up already, Lord. Come help me now. And certainly, not one of us has ever felt or expressed these very sentiments of the psalmist, have we? You know, like, Lord, could you kind of heal my body today and not wait until tomorrow or the next day, but like right now, Lord? Yes, waiting is difficult, but such is life. 
Waiting is a major part of our daily routines. In lines at the supermarket, the bank, the pharmacy, the doctors and the dentist's offices, the emergency room, at traffic lights, oh, and of course in traffic. How difficult it is awaiting the prognosis of test results from the doctor, whether it would be a good or bad report, or even during the transitioning of a dying loved one. I've named just a few waiting experiences in our lives, and yes, in some cases, they do bring about frustration. Just, ugh, waiting. Then how about the dreaded experience of delays? Is there anything worse than a delay? That dreaded delay. A question is asked of Christians. It says, how do we feel about delays? Delays due to road construction. Delays in service from insurance companies. Delays at airports, oh, hate them. Delays in refunds from the IRS. Delays at the McDonald's drive through window. Delays in court cases. Delays in medical treatments. Delays in new technology. And of course the list goes on. Oh, waiting and delays. Why well, not one of us is excluded from waiting or delays. The issue is the manner in which we deal with them, waiting and delays. What's our attitude, our behavior, what we choose to do while waiting, our preparedness when the time of waiting is ended. As people of God, how we live from day to day determines how prepared we are for the coming of the kingdom of heaven on earth, which Jesus lifts up in today's gospel. And lastly, for the coming of our Lord, just how prepared are we? How we exercise the virtue of patience. And that's a virtue I still struggle with, patience. But how we exercise this virtue determines our frame of mind or our state of well-being, our preparedness, especially if and when there is a delay, such as the case here in the parable of the ten bridesmaids told by Jesus in today's gospel lesson. How familiar is this age-old story about ten virgins awaiting the coming of the bridegroom for his bride? Five were wise and five were foolish. We know the story. Whereas all ten virgins had the same opportunity to take extra oil for their lamps, five were deemed foolish because they chose not to. They had a choice while the other five were deemed wise simply because they chose to take extra oil. Thus, while each of the ten bridesmaids possessed burning lamps of oil while awaiting the bridegroom's coming, the problem for the five virgins who were deemed foolish was the delayed coming of the bridegroom. If he just not had delayed his coming, perhaps the oil would have lasted. But the bridegroom's coming was delayed. Oh, that dreaded delay. And on this regard, it is noted here that the unfaithful ones in the parable were ready for coming, but not for a delay. How about that? They were ready for the coming, but they were not prepared for a delay. And because of this delay, time is spent as well as the oil in each of the maiden's burning lamps. And in that spent time, as revealed in scripture, all of them became drowsy and they fell asleep. 
both the foolish and the wise fell asleep. They all slept. But at midnight, when the kingdom, when the bridegroom finally does arrive, as all ten of the bridesmaids awaken to trim their lamps, as the story goes, whereas five of them have run short of oil, the other five with oil to spare declare they do not have enough to share. Not enough oil. Thus the five without enough oil are unprepared to meet the bridegroom, which costs them dearly. Hence, in the telling of this parable, Jesus stresses to his hearers, Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Thus, the lesson here for us is that while each of our lives consists of periods of waiting and, of course, delays, it is important how we are managing our time. Are we awake in making preparations for our Lord's coming or have we fallen asleep? Hence, might the moral of the story be, don't fall asleep on the job. Or more like the old folks where I'm from used to say, don't let the good Lord catch you with your work undone. They used to say that when I was growing up, the old folks used to say, don't let the good Lord catch you with your work undone. The question is, how prepared are we for the kingdom of heaven on earth, for our Lord's coming? How prepared are we? Something to ponder. But here's a word of caution. Don't be getting ready. Be ready. The Pentecostal tradition that I'm from and was reared in was constantly teaching about a rapture of God's church and of course, this is in our Thessalonians. We got it from this today's Thessalonians reading about the Lord shall appear in the sky and a great trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and those who remain living shall be caught up to meet him in the air. That's called the rapture. That's where Pentecostals get that teaching from the rapture. And we used to have this saying in our church. A person would get up in the front and say, don't be sitting down, be rapture ready. And we'd all jump up from the pews and like rapture ready. And that's what this lesson reminds me of about these uh, sleeping versions, these sleeping ones, they were not rapture ready, so to speak. And not to mention how over at that seminary over there, they killed, burst my bubble about the rapture. <laughs> Okay, but there is such a time that we should be ready and not getting ready. So I don't have to tell you to be rapture ready, but don't be getting ready for the coming kingdom of God on earth. Be ready. Be on guard, watching while waiting. And again, in reference to the parable, since all of the bridesmaids slept, as I pointed out earlier, it is also noted that it is not the watchfulness that is the issue. The issue is, which I've been saying over and over, preparedness in the face of uncertainty. Oh. Thus, we are often faced with uncertainties in our lives in the process of waiting. But just as it was for the early disciples who walked with Jesus, we are to live in a state of readiness, expectancy, doing the work of the Lord, always hoping in Christ, not giving up hope. As dire as these times and days may seem, we are not to give up hope. We are to always hope in Christ. We, the church, are lacking to these ten bridesmaids awaiting the return of the bridegroom, Jesus Christ our Lord. Biblically, the church is the bride of Christ. And we live in expectancy and anticipation of taking part in this marriage feast of the Lamb. Are our lamps filled with oil? 
So what are we to do in this in between, in the meantime, while waiting? We are to keep our lamps lit and burning, of course. This little light of mine, that's what that little song is about. I'm going to let it shine, us believers in Christ, bearing the light of Christ. I ran across these words of encouragement that I will share with you today. And it says, it seems that we have a choice in the matter. We can become frustrated, angry, and apathetic. And let these responses burn out our supply of oil, which is our faith. Or we can stay awake by allowing the oil of prayer. And Pastor Yost, I know that how you are such a praying man of God. It was said throughout our Senate that that Bishop Herman Yost believes in prayer. He's the most praying person that you can ever run across, and that he is. And some people are just that way, and he was always just a man who was a, let's pray about that. Let's pray. Can I pray for you? And here the word for us today is that the way to keep our lamps burning and that little light shining is by allowing the oil of prayer to sustain us, the sacraments to nourish us, the community of believers to shoulder us, and the life-giving words of Jesus to animate us. End of quote. This is indeed good news. Moreover, when it comes down to it, as is expressed by the prophet Amos, what God wants from us by way of preparation for the kingdom is simple but not easy. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. These words of Amos are ever so reflective of the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in his fight for justice. But here I'd like to share something from commentary that's a rather in your face message from this prophet Amos. And it reads The book of Amos has a hard message. Number one, if you can go to church and hate your neighbor, your religion is a shame. Number two, if you can go to church and not care about hungry children, your religion is a sham. Number three, if you can worship and not care about the stranger, your religion is a sham. Number four, if you can worship and not visit the sick and those in prison, your religion is a sham. Now, isn't that kind of in your face? from the prophet Amos, but it's hard, tight, but it's right. So in closing, people of God, our preparedness is not only participating as Christians, it's not only participating in worship services, our worship practice, practices, how much we come to church, how much we give in tithe and offering, but to do the work of justice. It is a mandate for the people of God. Micah 6 and 8. What does the Lord require of the old mortal? Justice is part of that. We are to love our neighbors and be a voice for the voiceless. And lastly, our preparedness and waiting is a lifetime effort. But the good news is we have the blessed assurance that we do not wait alone. Our Lord Jesus, God in Christ, is with us in our waiting. To this I say thanks be to God and amen.